Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to walk through how I was able to successfully integrate Redux into a Phaser 3 game to give the player multiple control scheme options. All right, so first let's look inside of the heart of Redux, the store. So we are importing apply middleware and create store from Redux as well as a Redux logger. We have some action types, one for each control scheme, action creators, that will be exported to use inside the game. And then I have pre-made states for each control scheme so that it can be more controlled, that come with a style, as well as up, down, left, right, and enter, which in each control scheme holds the key code for the button that will be doing the job of up, down, left, right, and enter. Then down in the reducer, for each action type, we are returning the pre-made state for that control scheme. And at the bottom, we are creating the store with the reducer and the logger middleware so that we can see when the state changes and we are exporting the store. Then inside of base scene, we are importing the controls store. And then in the function create controls, I am getting the state from Redux and saving it to this.controls so we can access the control scheme and then creating a this.keys object to hold the actual button inputs that will be passed to the spaceship sprite for it to listen or button pushes in order to update the movement and animations for the sprite. Back inside create controls, we are saving up, down, right, left, and enter to keys by creating a keyboard input for the key code that is saved inside the Redux state. And then also in the create controls display, which creates the button prompts at the bottom of the screen, we are making sure that the proper key codes are in those displays as well. Then inside of the main scene, which is built off of base scene, we get the Redux state inside of the create controls function. We also create the controls display and then we make sure that the proper key code for enter is inside the extra button prompt we have in that scene. This scene is pretty simple because we're only getting a state, but inside of the controls remap scene is where things get a little more complicated. We actually have to import the controls store as well as all of the action creators from the store in order for us to change the control schemes within the scene. And because the control scheme is going to be changing inside this scene, we have to subscribe to the store so that the scene itself can receive information from Redux whenever the store changes. We also have to make sure we save the return from control store dot subscribe because that is the function that will allow us to unsubscribe from the store. Inside of dot subscribe, is a callback function that runs every time the Redux state changes. So inside of that, we are visually deselecting the past control scheme. We are creating the controls with the new key codes using the create controls function. We are changing the button prompts on the screen. And then lastly, we are visually selecting the new control scheme by turning it green. Lower down in this file, we have all of our dispatches to the store, which we're using number keys for. And each one has a separate number key that will dispatch the action to change to that control scheme. It's important though, in this step for us to use phaser.input.keyboard.justup to dispatch these actions. The reason we do that is because just up will only return true if the button was just released. So it will only return true once for every time a button is pressed. That is better than the is down property because that only checks if a button is currently pushed down. So an action could be dispatched any number of times. With Redux, it's important to make sure there's no extra actions, nothing that doesn't need to happen inside of Redux is sent because that can bog down your application and slow it down. So we make sure we use just up to fire those dispatches only one time Per button push. And every time we dispatch an action, the state changes. So the 
callback function inside of subscribe runs, everything changes in the view and the controls are remade so that the ship can be controlled using the new set of buttons. And lastly, we can see that if the enter key is pushed, we want to unsubscribe from the store because the, we're going to be leaving this scene. And then we want to start the main scene so that we can go back in and play our simple game. And then once we go back into main scene, the buttons will persist because we call create controls again, as well as create controls display. So it will access the new Redux state. So it will have all the updated versions of each key. So now let's go inside of our game and see how it works in real time. So as you can see right now, I am controlling the ship using the arrow keys. That is the default. But if we go inside of controls remap, you can see I'm still controlling with the arrow keys, but if I press right hand alt, you can see in the Redux logger, the state has changed. So it used to be right hand and now it is right hand alt. So now I can control the ship using I, J, K, and L. Which is pretty neat. But if I press the arrow keys, nothing happens because those buttons are no longer in the Redux state. I can also press four to switch to left hand, which not only changes the buttons for left, right, up and down, but also enter. So you can see press tab to play instead of press enter to play because enter is replaced with tab for left hand options. And now I can control with E, F, D and S, but none of the other buttons do anything. Now let's go back into the main scene. And as you can see, the left hand controls have persisted through to the main scene because it is getting the current Redux state and the button prompts at the bottom of the screen reflect the changes to the control scheme as well as press tab to change control scheme instead of press enter. Now let's do this one more time just to make sure it still works. Now we're gonna try the two-handed option. The Redux state has changed as you can see in the logger. And now we can control using J, K, F, and D to control our ship. And when we go back to the main scene, those are still the controls and you can see the button prompts have changed at the bottom. So that's everything I had to do to successfully implement Redux inside of a phaser three game. I find it is very useful to have Redux taking care of the long-term global settings of a game so that your phaser files can really just focus on the moment to moment gameplay and local state of each scene. I hope this helped some of you guys learn more about Redux, more about phaser, and a little bit about how they can work really well together to make a beautiful pairing. Happy coding.